Okay, what is the culture? I'm not going to talk much about culture, but culture, you know, you've, you've heard a lot about it, developing culture. I'm sure everybody has, you know, we've got to outwork the other team. Um, we've got to be better every day. That's a big one. That's an easy one, but you've got to work at it. Accountability is probably the number one thing. Um, my first year coaching as an assistant in the NHL was with Colorado. Joe Sackick's last year, it's the year he was, uh, he put his hand in a snowblower, if you remember the story, to unplug it, and it kicked back on, he kind of hurt his hand, but, so anyways, I'm coaching Joe Sackick, so I'm, I'm kind of in awe of him, you know, I'm coming up to Joe, hey Joe, I'm Dave Barr, how are you doing, I'm going to be working with you, and so he's talking back and forth, and I say to him, I go, uh, I said, Joe, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say much to you about offense, but I'll, you know, I'll work with you on D-zone coverage. And, and he goes, no, 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 no. You tell me whatever you think you need to tell me. He goes, you, you think I need to do something different offensively? Let me know. And I kind of went like, you know, I kind of felt dumb after for saying that, but at the time I, I thought it was like, I'm going to tell Joe Sackick how to create offense, how to you know, be involved in the offense. So that, that's the accountability. Everybody wants to be held accountable. Different degrees of that, for sure. Team first, honesty, honesty et cetera, et cetera. So that's up to uh, you know, how you want to do it. What systems to use with this skilled group, your player group that you have? What systems do you use? Like, what are you going to do with your neutral zone forecheck? What are you going to do with your D zone coverage? So the Minnesota D-Zone, when I was in Minnesota, we had an undersized defensive group. There, we had like four guys who were 5'10". All good defensemen, but just we were undersized. We couldn't stop psych- team cycling, cycling. Excuse me. It was hard for us to stop the cycle. So we had to tweak our D-Zone coverage. We kind of went into a man-on-man before man-on-man was popular at all. We kind of had to do it just because of who we have. Uh, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, PDB, Pete DeBoer, in New Jersey, we had Marty Brodeur in net. Best, one of the best puck handling goalies of all time, if not the best. So Pete came up with a neutral zone forecheck that essentially forces the other team to throw it up the wall and chip it in, which is going right to Marty. So what we would do is F1 would come up, come up to their left defenseman, he would take away the quick up. So what's this guy going to do? He's going to pass it to the right D because any play up through here is hard. So it goes over to the right defenseman. F1 comes across, takes away the middle pass, and he passes through the middle. F, F3, F2 is on the strong side. F3, he holds middle ice. He's standing right at the center ice dot, essentially, somewhere in that ballpark. So left D to right D. You know, if you're that right defenseman, what are you going to do? I'm going to pass it up to our right winger, and he's going to tip it into speed, whatever. So we use that, and it worked extremely well. You know, you try forcing it through, it was, you know, they're turning pucks over. So you're going D to D up the wall. They did it 95% of the time, and it worked in our favor because a lot of times they're chipping it in, and it's going right to Marty Brodeur. So with the with the con the play, the personnel that you have you have that's that's deciding on maybe what kind of systems you're going to use or tweaking systems